It was a typical Tuesday in 221B Baker Street. It has been a few weeks since my friend Sherlock Holmes left the apartment. I've been insisting that he goes out for fresh air, find a decent case to get his head working. His replies are always the same. I'm much too busy, Watson. Many cases to be solved. Busy, busy, busy. Mm, that was true. We've had many clients making appointments for the clever detective to solve their cases. But the detective proved too clever, solving every single case without leaving his chaise long. Detective, I was hoping you could help me. It's about my son. I'm terribly worried about his welfare. He's quite handsome and very intelligent. He was a student at Cambridge. He seldom visits much. And I have been receiving letters from friends in the city that they have seen him bruised and hurt. When I wrote to him last month, he replied that he had just been robbed. Oh, it's ghastly, Mr. Holmes, this torrid affair. You see, my son is a businessman. He came to me asking for an investment in his company. So I sent my son another cash advancement. But the poor lad... Someone had gone and burned his warehouse down. Detective, I need you to find out who is ruining my son's financial future. Thank you, Mrs. Parrish. Detective Holmes and I shall be on this straight away with this investigation, perhaps starting with an interview with your son. Watson, no need. Mrs. Parrish, I notice that you're a widow. But, Sherlock, Mrs. Parrish still has her wedding ring on her hand. That's hers, no doubt, but her husband's is around her neck. I noticed you holding the top of your blouse as though reaching for your husband's ring whenever the topic was concerning financial stability. I am certain there is regret attached to your husband and financial status implying that your husband had problems, more specifically gambling. I deduce that your son inherited his father's gambling addiction and as a result gambled at your investment. He must have lost big and decided that he needed to change his business model. And then he requested for more of your investment. Based on his injuries, I can finally theorize that your son lost money from an illegal fight club in an abandoned warehouse. His latest venture was ruined after a riot escalated. Five men were arrested five miles from the fire for suspicion of taking part in this activity. It was on the news last week, I believe. Unbelievable. Indeed, Dr. Watson. I find this hard to believe that you are accusing my son of shameful behaviour. Oh! Thank you. But I will not be requiring your service. Case closed. Next. Well, uh, Mr. Thomason is here to see you. Bring him in. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, my name is Mr. Thomason. Ah, you're a working man, involved in manual labour. A blacksmith? I'm guessing. How did you guess I'm a blacksmith? Yes, Holmes. How did you? He's obviously not dressed for it. I used to be a blacksmith, yeah. But now I have a new profession. One that is no longer requiring of manual work. Your hands. They gave you away. Decades of sweat and muscle had gone into hammering. Particularly your left hand. It's larger and more toned than your right. Implying that you are left-handed. That is all. Very observant of you, detective. But I'd appreciate if I could get back to explaining my case. Go on. My family are being followed. By that I mean we're being harassed. My daughter was shopping one night and a few thugs were tracking her home. She told me how frightened she was of what they might do to her. They blackmailed my wife. Made indecent threats if we do not pay them. I just don't understand. No matter how much we give, they keep coming back for more. Have you tried the police? I don't trust the police. They would want evidence. As I said, please help my family. I'm out of ideas, detective. What do you think, Sherlock? Maybe if it came from us, their case might prove stronger? No need, Watson. Very interesting, Mr. Thomason. I often come to the conclusion that the traits of left-handedness are independence and fast thinking. 
you surely demonstrated your role as a father, husband and protector, and that you would do anything to keep your family safe and to become successful. And you certainly have a tendency to dodge a few sensitive subjects, like for instance, this is clearly a police matter. Why ever would you require assistance from a private detective? Here's a lesson for you. Don't think that you can hire a detective and not expect him to be detecting you. You're not telling me the whole story, are you? All right. I may have missed out the fact that I might have owed them some debts, but I intend to pay it back. There's no excuse for threatening my family. They aren't to blame. I'm sorry, I cannot help you. I've solved all the mystery there is to this. This is a legal matter now. Curse you, Sherlock Holmes. You don't care about anyone else but yourself. I believe this session is over, Mr. Thomason. All the best for your case. <coughs> well, that was quite low for you, Sherlock. You knew how you could help him out of this legal situation. I do indeed, Watson. But I'm not interested in being in the middle of a financial feud. I'm far too busy. We have one more client to see us, Holmes. Try not to aggravate them. I can promise you so much, Watson. But the more I speak to them, the more I want to shoot them. Good evening, sir. Come right this way. Stop. Don't speak. I already know what you want. How could you, Sherlock? The man didn't even speak. I don't need to. The moment the gentleman entered the door and sat down, I already worked out everything about this man. All right, detective. Why am I here? Your top hat. It has animal hair, and so does the bottom of your trousers. About knee-high strands of hair. A small pet, a dog, a cat. A slight scratch on your knuckle suggests it's a cat, but it's not your cat. Leather boots. You enjoy long walks or the countryside, but you haven't been walking. No mud. Just wet leather boots from the puddle outside. Gloves on your left side pocket. You've ridden here on a horse and carriage. I heard you arrive. You've travelled a long distance to see me, but you are not the person with the case. You're a courier to relay a message. More like a proposal. The ink stains on your right hand suggest that you had either written a letter or a cheque or both. They're inside your left jacket pocket. No need to get it out. I already know what it is. I deduced that much until you sat down. Did I see your handkerchief with the crest of a golden dragon? It's the family coat of arms of the Wycliffe family. I know about their later scandal. Tell your employer. The answer is... Australia. Australia? Yes, keep the check and post it to me if the answer is right. I think it's right. Most certainly is. Huh. Thank you, detective. You certainly are one of a kind. Thanks for coming. Blimey, Sherlock, that's the quickest case you've ever solved. I try my best. <sighs> now, do we have any more cases to solve? I feel it's time for breakfast. Not yet, Holmes. We have one more. Another case? Not particularly. Someone from the London Gazette called. Oh, not a journalist. Please, Sherlock, trust me on this. With the recent scandal and all, you really need someone who can fix this. I only dressed in women's clothing once as part of my investigation. You were caught in bed with the Prince of Austria. I'm surprised you're not arrested for being a homosexual. You know as well as I do that I was trying to test a theory whether there was a killer in the palace. Which proved embarrassingly false in the end. He's here. Why don't you at least change out of your nightgown? You're being interviewed by the London Gazette. Remember, your words count, so be nice. And please, Sherlock, wear your own underwear. Hello, I'm Charles Henfield of the Gazette. You must be Dr. John Watson. Pleasure to meet you. Yes, good morning, Mr. Henfield. Holmes will be ready in just a minute. I'm always prepared, Watson. Let the man in. Splendid. Nice to meet you, Sherlock Holmes. I'm Charles Henfield. Ugh. Is there something the matter, Detective? Nothing. I can tell your writing will be mediocre at best. Okay. Please, uh, Mr. Henfield, uh, just seat yourself down and I'll get us some tea. So, Mr. Henfield, 
Oh, please. For the purpose of this interview, may I suggest that we keep things informal? It allows the interview process to be relaxing and honest. Certainly. Charles, is it? Yes. What is the purpose of this interview, Charles? I am writing to get to know the real Sherlock Holmes. Someone beneath the enigma of the world's greatest detective with lightning speed, art of deduction. So tell me, Sherlock, is there any truth to your talents? Here's the tea. <laughs> Would you allow me to tell you what I can see about you? Oh, dear. Yes, please do. I am excited to know. Did you want any sugar with your tea, Charles? He takes two teaspoons with a lot of milk. Very intuitive, but a lucky guess, no doubt. You were born in Durham, studied in public school, favoured sports and gymnastics. Correct. Well done on guessing my birth town. You're a lover of gothic literature and crime novels. Uh, correct, so far. But how did you guess that too, I wonder? Simple. You're a fan of what I do. Understandable. Clever. Go on. He really shouldn't. No, really. It's really fascinating how he's guessing all of this. Please, go on. Your mother died. <clears throat> what? The flower on your jacket. Pink carnation. Its symbol is for the love of a woman. Or a mother. Your shoes are muddy and sore are your knees. You've stopped over at her grave this morning. You kept a piece of her with you. It's actually my grandmother. I never knew my parents. They died when I was young. It was my grandmother that died recently. However, you're absolutely right. Also the tie that you're wearing. You're right. Sherlock. Sorry, I'm doing it again. My apologies. So, does the greatest detective possibly know everything? Oh, I wouldn't say that. We're not going to go through that again, are we? Go through what? Sherlock is only limited to certain knowledge. After all, he is human. There's only so much the human brain can accommodate. Some information is of no use to Sherlock me. didn't even know the Earth revolved around the Sun. Such knowledge is irrelevant to my work. He's proficient at anatomy. I need to be. If I were to solve homicides... He knows a fair bit of geology. Good for tracking and forestry. Not to mention botany, though he's useless at gardening. I know my way around poisons and such. And testing 180 types of tobacco. 184? But Sherlock knows nothing of astronomy, philosophy, and literature. What can I say? They serve no purpose in my investigation. Do you often read? Only newspapers. The murder section, no doubt. I heard you're skilled in martial arts. Is that true? Yes, he is. Uh, what's it called? Jiu-jitsu or something? Baritsu. It's a special martial arts from Japan. My knowledge of the human body allows me to disable any part of their anatomical areas. I'm better at fencing. I beat you in fencing? What are you talking about? What do you mean? We had that fight in Madrid with the jewel thief and we were both fighting over her. You won a disadvantaged fight. You nipped me in the kneecap. I can tell you two must have been on great adventures together. He poisoned me. What? When? The alchemist case. You told me that the medicine was safe to drink. I didn't think you'd drink it. It was a bluff for the alchemist saying that his medicines are counterfeit. And what did I drink? Cyanide. <laughs> That's right. I did save you in the end. We were trailing all over Camden Market trying to find the ingredients to make the antidote. Long story. So, tell me more about the relationship you two have. Why does everyone think we're a couple? Did you ever feel like taking a break from the exciting detective life you've led? Well, I'm nearly engaged to someone. I don't think Sherlock will ever settle down. We all know your engagement is pretentious and silly. I give it a couple of kids and a divorce and he'll be crawling back to this flat, regretting the day that he said, I do. That's an awful thing to say. <laughs> He's joking. It's no issue. Your left hook said otherwise. We're good now, aren't we? You have a girlish swing to your hook. You sure you fought in wars with that arm of yours? I can't do this. I don't understand how you, Sherlock Holmes, can be a vain, arrogant, conceited. I used to look up to you. And my son still looks up to you. It was his dream to solve the greatest enigma of the greatest detective in the world. 
wait till he hears how unspecial the truth behind him is. <sighs> Excuse me. It's about that time of the day when I must practice a few arpeggio scales for the violin. It's that bloody time of day. Thank you for your time, Charles. It's been nice meeting you. Oh, nice. Very nice, Sherlock. Well. John, hmm? I have to ask you something. Honestly, you can tell me he's not in the room and this is strictly confidential. Have you ever wanted to stop being friends with him? I don't think Holmes ever thought he had any friends. You must understand, Charles, that Sherlock is blessed and cursed with that intellect of his. When you see him solve a case in a blink of an eye, you witness a god. Not many can understand him. Sherlock retains so much of that brilliant knowledge that there's hardly any room for more knowledge, let alone people to enter his life. Perhaps I never will. I respect that. You speak of him with so much sincerity. I think I understand. I can see how I can write this. Once I'm done, Dale sees Sherlock for his vulnerable side. Sherlock Holmes, according to the words of his best friend, Dr. Watson. Charles, I implore you, do not disclose this particular information publicly for Holmes' reputation and his protection. I'll bear that in mind. I'm doing it as a favour for you, though. Thank you, Charles. You're a good friend, John. Nice to meet you. Is he gone? Yes. So what did you talk about? Oh, he asked a few questions about my life and left. Your life? How can your life be of any interest to anyone? I agree. <laughs> By the way, you're right. I have no need of friends. One is all I need. <laughs>